are helping those who have been overcome to be overcomers. Your dreams and desires are important to God and to us. We're interested in you, not in what you can do for us. We want God's best for you. Join with me today and discover how God's Word can bring the miracle you need. For over 53 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center, teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping hurting people in America and in over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. We welcome you to the program today. Give them a good amen. Amen. We got something special we wanted to show you, and since we're pastor, we have a right to do this right on television, don't we? We want to introduce you to our new granddaughter who was born last Wednesday at 6, 18 p.m., and this is April and Gary Simon's first child. This is our youngest daughter, and this is little Christiana McCall, and she's beautiful, and we're so thrilled that she's here, and all is well. Amen. amen. Everybody said amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you, Dodie. Well, let's... Lift up our Bibles. All right, let's make our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We invite the television audience to join with us in 1 Samuel. We're going to read about David and the giant. And the giant stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And you servants of Saul, choose one man for you and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we'll be your servants. If I prevail against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Then look in verse 26. And David spake unto the men and stood that stood by, saying, What shall be done to the man that taketh away the reproach from Israel? And who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he may defy the armies of the living God? Could I have an amen? amen. Look in verse 36. Thy servant, David is talking, thy, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And David said, Moreover, the Lord shall that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Could I have an amen? amen. Now, I'm not going to read you the rest of the story, but I'll just simply tell you that this was a very crucial time in the uh, history of Israel. The Philistines had afflicted Israel, and now they had them intimidated. And the armies of Israel were on one side on a mountain, and the Philistines were on the other side, and there was a valley in between. And uh, this giant, Goliath, would come out. He would shout out with his voice, send the men out and let us fight together. Whoever overcomes will be the servant of others. And the Bible says that Israel trembled when he shouted. And then David had come down there from keeping those few sheep, and he saw what was going on. This happened day after day after day after day. And David was astounded. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They've got dead gods. We've got the living God. Now, I want to tell you today, the world may look black and dark, and things may look like on the downside, but I want you to know we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Amen. He said, I'll go out and fight him. And David 
tried to put on the armor of Saul and it was too big and he said, get it off of me. I don't need somebody else's armor. He went down to the brook and he picked out five smooth stones. And David looked out at that giant and he said, you come against me with sword and spear. But I come against you in the name of the Lord my God. And he ran toward the giant and he took that slingshot, just one smooth stone, and he let it go and hit him right in the forehead and that giant fell. And David got on top of him and took out his own sword and chopped his head off. And God gave them great victories. Hallelujah. Well, you know, there are all kinds of giants that face us today. Principalities and powers and the devil of himself, the giant of AIDS, the giant of cancer, the giant of depression, the giant of all kind of trouble in our homes, the giant of wrong kind of living and alternate all lifestyle and all of that. Giants are in the land. Giants everywhere. But I want to preach today on four marks of giant killers. Say, I'm a giant killer. You say, Brother Osteen, I see thousands of people here in this church. What in the world is going on? We don't have but a handful. How come you got so many people that we are training people to stop trembling in the face of giants and to become giant killers? The great denominational world in general have people who are intimidated by the affairs of life, by the giants of life by uh, the great mountains that face them, the great assaults of the devil that is hurled against them. And like Israel's army, when giants roar, the giant of divorce, the giant of cancer, the giant of AIDS, the giant of poverty, the giant of trouble and sorrow, they tremble and say, oh, this must be my lot in life. Thank God we don't have to tremble anymore. We are training giant killers. Amen. Say, I'm a giant killer. I'm a giant killer. You see, it's not enough just to be religious today. It's not enough just to uh, merely go down your, the, the, the stream of life singing your denominational lullabies. It's not enough just to jump and to shout and say, I've got the victory. You need to know how to become a giant killer. That's why thousands come out here. They don't come out here for John Osteen. They come out here because they get the Word of God and they find out to become, how they can become a giant killer. Amen. Amen. Shout it again, I'm a giant killer. I'm a giant killer. Well, what are the marks of a giant killer? What are the marks? Well, let's think about David. We'll use him. He was a good giant killer. Number one, the first mark of a giant killer is consecration. Consecration. David was consecrated to God. He was a man after God's own heart. And if you're going to be a giant killer, you're going to have to have a personal consecration to God. You hear David talking about God. He said, the Lord is not just anybody's shepherd. He's my shepherd. See, he's consecrated to God. He was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See how personal that is? A consecration to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I, David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for he's with me. He's with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David was consecrated to God. And if you want to kill giants, you've got to make a consecration to God to live right and to do right. Oh, you know there are people in this world, they misuse people, they abuse people, they cheat people, they lie to people, they deceive themselves, and then they wonder why they can't kill giants. You'll never kill giants living a life that's so shallow it's not dedicated to God. 
You need to be dedicated to God. You can't live there with some man or woman you're not married to and expect to kill giants. You can't cheat people out of their honest debts and not pay your debts and expect to kill giants. You can't lie to people and deceive people and take their money from them uh, in Ill illegal ways and expect God to help you kill a giant. No, you're weak as water and you'll never kill a giant until you're consecrated to God. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? There needs to be a consecration to where we are ready to do right at any time, anywhere. We need to belong to Jesus and belong to him with all of our hearts. Do you know people say they're consecrated to God and many of them never go to church and maybe they go to church just one time, once in a while, and they think they're dedicated to God. Listen, when you're consecrated to God, you want to be in his house all the time. Could I have an amen? amen. The mark of a giant killer, you must, you must be consecrated to God. The Bible said, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But if you don't submit yourself to God, you can resist the devil and he'll, he'll get after you and, fight and overcome you. Submit yourself to God. Make a consecration to God. Give him your all. Come out of that, that awful lifestyle or, or that deception you're in. Live a pure, honest life and treat people right. And I'll tell you, that consecration will make you strong when you face that giant. What's the next uh, mark of a giant killer? Not only consecration, but confession. Everybody say confession. confession. You know David was a giant killer, but he was not a perfect man. Most of you who know the Bible know that David sinned a terrible sin. He failed God. He disobeyed God. But let me tell you what David was. He was not only a man of consecration, he was a man of confession. He was quick to confess. He didn't plead his case. He pled, he pled guilty. Listen to how he prayed when he had sinned against God. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. You know, many people today have no heartbreak over sin they commit. After sin, after sin, after sin. And yet there are no tears. There's not no going to people. There's no making things right. If you're going to be a giant killer when you fail God, you're going to have to confess. Oh God, I'm guilty. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I warn the television audience, don't go against any giant with unconfessed sin in your heart. It doesn't take that long to get forgiven. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. So you not only need to, be a, uh, to have a, a consecrated heart, you need to be quick to confess when you are wrong. Some people think they're never wrong. Some people never are willing to admit their mistakes. The man or woman who does not get rid of those things will never kill giants. Because you're weak and guilty on the inside. Straighten up. Fly right. Pay your bills. Treat people right. Oh, that's worth more than all the hooping and the hollering and the jumping and the falling out you can do. Live right. We're living in a day when people live in all kinds of sins and claim to be Christians. Let me tell you something. You'll never be a giant killer until you learn to consecrate yourself to God and learn to confess your sins. Oh, David did more than confess his sins. After he confessed his sins, he confessed what God would do through him. So it doesn't just have to be confession of sin. To be a giant killer, you need to get the right words in your mouth. David made not only the confession of his sin, he was a man of confession of victory. The Israelites said, Goliath is too big to fight. David said, he's too big to miss. Too big to miss. 
Israel tremble. But David began to say, God delivered me out of the paw of the lion. God delivered me out of the paw of the, the bear. Now listen to his words. And the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver this Philistine into my hands. He confessed victory. I'll tell you with giants tramping all around you and having a war dance around you, stand up and say, I'm a giant killer. I'm going to whip every one of them in the name of Jesus. My confession is, I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Shout, I'm a giant killer. What are the marks of a giant killer? The mark of consecration. The mark of confession. And then there is the mark of courage. The mark of courage. You know, God said to Joshua, I'm going to read that to you. Joshua chapter 1. When Moses had died, Moses, my servant, is dead. But notice, he said, now rise. Now he's going to command Joshua. Look in verse 6. Be strong. And of good courage. This is God Almighty talking to a man. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all according to this law. Be strong and very courageous. Verse 9. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage and be not afraid. Neither be dismayed. I'm telling you, a giant killer has to have courage. Oh, you may tremble inside, but I'll tell you, you'll be standing up on the inside. I tell that story. Y'all don't know what I'm going to say. Little Johnny wouldn't sit down in church. His mother said, sit down, Johnny. He wouldn't sit down. Sit down, Johnny. He wouldn't sit down. I said, sit down, Johnny. He wouldn't sit down. His mother got up and pushed his head down just like that and just pushed him down. He sat there with her hand on his head and he said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> you may be trembling on the outside, but stand strong on the inside. I'll tell you, you need courage. Cry babies, do not impress God. Now, I'm not talking about sorrow. I'm not talking about weeping over your sins. I'm not talking about a broken heart searching after God and all of that. But cry babies, do not impress God. Be strong and little old weak, nilly, willy, nilly, spineless, spaghetti Christians who are sort of half embarrassed to be in this church. You're not going to amount to a hill of beans. You don't have any courage. You want to be accepted by the great religious community and have dignified religion and be associated with the high and the mighty. Let me tell you something. We're in pretty good company. Peter, James, and John, and Mary, the Blessed Virgin, and, and all the disciples, like in the book of Acts, who spoke in tongues, prophesied, prayed for the sick, and cast out devils. You need courage. Any old dead fish can float downstream. It takes a live one to go upstream. I'll tell you what keeps people out of Holy Ghost power. It's fearfulness. It's pride. It's lack of courage. Thank God there are bold souls today that are rising up. No wall is high enough to hold them. No net is strong enough to hold them. Nobody's going to stop them. They've got courage. They're going to serve God with all of their heart. You've got to be strong and of good courage. No weak, trembling, timid soul is ever going to kill any giants. So you need the mark of consecration. You need the mark of confession. You need the mark of courage. Listen to what David said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. The host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The war rise against me. In this will I be confident. Hallelujah. That's courage. When everybody forsook David, Ziglag was burned. All of his faithful men and women turned against him. Everything looked dark. Nobody would encourage him. The Bible says that David, that David, 
encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You notice he didn't encourage himself in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, though it was the same God. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So if you don't have any courage, encourage. Put some in you. Encourage yourself. And as you know, that was one of David's darkest hours. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. Seventy-two hours later, he was sitting on the throne of Israel. You may in your darkest hour be only 72 hours from your greatest victory. You must, you must be a man or a woman of courage. I'll tell you, I need to preach to the men. I'm telling you, women have courage. They'll, they'll beat the devil up with one hand tied behind them. I tell you, women are strong. I've traveled all over this world. I've gone up and down the mountains and in the valleys and all of that. And I've always found way back in there in some desolate place, three things. Catholics, Coca-Cola, and some little old woman preaching the gospel. <laughs> so you got to have courage. It took courage. It takes courage to raise a family by yourself. It takes courage to be a single parent. It takes courage to keep going when your children look like they're not going to do anything but serve the devil. It takes courage when you can't have money to pay your bills. Live with courage and God will bring you out. Amen. The marks of a giant killer consecration to God no playing games God knows everything about you everything you've ever done he knows every bill you've not paid I've had doctors talk to me and I've had other businessmen talk to me and they said the worst people to pay their debts are Christians they think they ought to have a free ride I'll tell you what we're doing through this television camera and in this church we are alerting the body of Christ that if we're going to kill giants and win the victory we've got to treat people right and do right the marks of a giant killer, consecration, confession, courage, and then the covenant. You realize that David was in covenant with God, but you have a greater and better covenant than David had. The book of Hebrews said that we have a better covenant built upon better promises. The Bible calls the blood of Jesus the blood of the everlasting covenant. And David's foreskin was cut off as a sign in his flesh. He was in covenant with God. And all these other men in the armies of Israel had the same covenant, but they trembled. The giant made them afraid, but David knew his covenant rights. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He's not in covenant with God. I'm in covenant with God. I want you to know, congregation here at Lakewood, that you're in a better covenant than David had. It was sealed by the blood of Jesus. It wasn't the foreskin cut away. It was the old sinful nature cut out of your heart. And now you want to live for God and serve Him. You're in covenant with God, sealed by the blood of Jesus. Come on, devil, make my day. We are in the blood covenant, the everlasting covenant. Jesus did not die in vain. Jesus was the biggest giant killer in the world. He whipped the devil and every demon that's on its way to hell. He whipped them all for us. He's the number one giant killer. And because he killed our enemy, defeated our enemy as it were, then we have covenant rights with him. You see, we don't come through that camera with bad news. We come with good news. We want you trembling, fearful, intimidated Christians who are losing the battles of life. We want you to become giant killers. But if you're going to be a giant killer, you've got to be consecrated to Jesus, make him the Lord of your life. You've got to have the right confession. Confess your sins, make everything right with him, turn away from your sins. You need to rise up in courage and quit crying like a whipped baby. And you need to realize that you're in divine covenant with God and you bear the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And I believe as the giants surround your life today, 
you're going to look up and say to them, watch out giant, here I come, I am a giant killer.